Yeah, the main thing that uh, we're seeing as climate change has progressed is that the polar regions of the Earth are in general really sensitive. They change a lot more than the temperate latitudes do. And so you'll find very few people that work in the field in glaciology who aren't thinking that right now is a, an amazing time of change for, for the polar regions. Something radical is happening to the Earth. And what we've seen is an increase in the surface melting in Greenland, an increase in the flow speeds across Greenland, and most importantly, more ocean-derived melt at the fronts of large glaciers that are leaving the ice sheet. Really, what we need to do is get a much better assessment of this ice-ocean interaction if we're gonna really forecast how sea level is gonna rise and what areas are likely to change next. The other aspect of this, that surface melting and uh, surface runoff, has led to some interesting things uh, in places like the Antarctic Peninsula. That's the uh, part of Antarctica that sticks up towards South America. And there, a change in wind patterns has led to a lot more warm air reaching that part of the continent. And on the lee slope, uh, these Chinook events, or in Europe they call them phone events, those lead to a lot of surface melting. That triggered some uh, ice shelf breakups. Now, an ice shelf is a big plate of ice that's sort of attached to the continent. Uh, it plays a role in holding back glacier flow speed by being braced against the sides of the bay that it encompasses or islands that are in the bay. There's a back stress that's provided to the glaciers. With this surface melting, intense surface melting that happened in the early part of this decade, several large uh, ice shelves uh, disintegrated very rapidly um, and it turns out that the mechanism is uh, the surface melt seeps into cracks the weight of the water fractures the ice all the way through and uh, allows it to disintegrate into millions of small pieces in a very short period of time but the longer term concern the concern for more of antarctica for a larger amount of mass of antarctica to eventually flow into the ocean is going to be this ice ocean interaction one of the key ways that we have to monitor and understand the changes in the ice sheets are uh, satellite data, satellite imagery, satellite measurements of things like the uh, surface heat, high resolution images showing details of the cracks and the ice flow. We desperately need to continue to monitor not just the cryosphere, the Earth's poles, but the entire Earth because change is happening rapidly. And having access to a number of satellite data tools well calibrated, reliable, long term, so that you can use the same instrument to detect change reliably. All of those things are key for understanding how the Earth, and in particular the poles, are changing. The other thing that's eventually going to impact all of this is an increase in sea level rise. We're already seeing that, but it's hard to make it clear how important it is when you're talking about a rise from past centuries where it was two millimeters, to three millimeters per year. That doesn't sound like much, but it's we're at the very beginning of the changes we expect to see in the cryosphere. And by the end of the century, it's looking as though we could see a meter more sea level than we have uh, today, on the order of a meter more. The following century looks to be dramatically different. 